Okay, so today's work uh, will be to try a different uh, front-end interface for uh, your uh, task list application. So right now, we already had uh, three different uh, front-ends for the task list. The first one was just based on the text menu, so on the console interface. Then we moved uh, to the Telegram bot for uh, handling the same set of, uh, um, of functions over your simple task list. And then, uh, two weeks ago, we worked uh, on a web application, okay, a web front-end. That web, web front-end that used, uh, say, older or more standard web technologies. Then we learned how to create a REST API, okay, for uh, exposing the functionality of uh, listing and modifying the task list uh, to third-party applications. Okay, today we'll try to create a new front-end for the same REST uh, API. So we are no longer using one web application that generates uh, for every HTML page, uh, queries the database, uh, and then generates the page. We are separating totally a portion of the website that works uh, with the REST interface and another, so the, we call them the backend, and they will be separated totally even if they lie in the same server, but uh, it's a limitation that can be easily removed by <laughs> having two web servers in two, two machines. So we separate the, the backend that is already available. We already have, you already created in the last lab, lab number six, uh, the REST APIs for uh, the task list, and we'll create a front-end application. So an application that uh, from the web page, uh, through the JavaScript code in the web page, uh, can query the REST APIs. Okay? So, but let's go uh, step by step. So what I did was to, um, say, make a copy <coughs> of the project uh, Python Lab 6. I called it Lab 7. Okay? So I'll be working here because uh, the scope of Lab number 7 next Monday would be to complete the exercise that we are starting today. Okay? So, but, but we start uh, to lay the foundation. So this uh, is exactly the copy. I just merged the solution branch into the master branch. So this master branch is the old, uh, let's say, solution of Lab 6 uh, that was developed uh, uh, last week, hmm? uh, or this Monday, actually. And we see that uh, this uh, is an, it's a Flask, Flask application, of course, that implements uh, the uh, get, so the list, uh, the get list of tasks, uh, get uh, the details of a single task, uh, uh, post, uh, so add a new task, uh, task uh, or put, uh, modify the details of a single task, uh, and finally delete uh, for uh, deleting a single task uh, given its uh, ID, task ID. Okay? So this is a very simple API uh, with these five uh, uh, actions. It's already working. Okay? We don't need to care about that. We already did it. What we want to do, but oh, this is just an API. So we need something to call it. What we want to do is to develop a front end, okay, for for it actually. So, like we have the REST server, we develop a front end uh, we called it uh, single page application. So maybe we have more than one single page, but actually the, the, the pattern here is uh, creating one HTML page with Flask, with the templates, uh, the usual mechanism. And but this page should be practically empty. It's just uh, the frame in which the contents will be inserted. And the management of the contents of this web page uh, will be dynamically created through JavaScript code. Okay? So the template will not call these queries. Uh, imagine that whatever is here in the front end does not have access to the database. Just imagine that, okay? This could be a separate web server. 
okay so at that point we can define route for a real web page it could be uh, tasks dot html where we actually return a page for managing the list of tasks managing means uh, listing inserting deleting and doing all these, these operations okay all in the front end so we just have to return a render template of a uh, tasks.html template that we are going to develop that's it we just need to deliver a page but there's no logic here actually there's no processing or that could be some checking about the user the validity of the session stuff like that but then there is nothing specific uh, uh, we are not creating uh, the list of tasks we are not querying the, the, the database uh, for getting the list of tasks we're just cre returning a template that will populate itself okay so we are delivering a front-end application a fr an application to the front-end to the user browser and uh, for making it easier so we will going to create a new directory called uh, template or templates template singular right in flask don't you remember i don't but let copy from here because i can cheat since templates I uh, remove, re, remove rename templates. Okay. And in the templates directory, we can create a task.html file. Hmm? So HTML. Uh, and this would be uh, the, the the skeleton of the page mm -hmm. um, we since we are doing some front-end work uh, it's easier if we use for example bootstrap uh, as we shown last time mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I can just tell you that uh, there's a simple simpler way of using bootstrap with flask uh, by using the flask bootstrap extension this is just a simple extension of flask that already preloads all the links needed for bootstrap development and uh, predefines the content of the page hmm? so actually how does it work you just have to this uh, example is quite simple you just have uh, to import this uh, flash booster package and then when you create the new application uh, uh, after it uh, call the booster function on the application so calling this booster would add the new method new functionality to the application object that uh, we can access basically through new templates uh, that are already ready to use Okay, so instead of writing head uh, link uh, uh, loading the CSS, loading the JavaScript, uh, we just extend, we inherit our templates uh, from a basic uh, template uh, that already includes all the bootstrap calls. So with just one line, mm, we solve our problem. And uh, um, the idea of this, uh, you know, extended templates uh, is that we can define, or actually, we already have a set of blocks. Uh, that are predefined empty usually and we can add information to these blocks here we have the list of blocks that are defined by the bootstrap extension for example you have a block uh, uh, for content so all the web page will be inside this block content uh, put stuff here 
if you want to change the title define the title of the page you just redefine the content of the block title if you want to add the new script uh, you just have to redefine the uh, content of the script of the script block and then it will be the template that will put all these blocks in the proper place hmm, in the right place uh, it's easier to to do than to say so we are we use we extend the server by importing also from flask underscore bootstrap import bootstrap capital b and we just uh, make this application bootstrap aware that's it on the server side now we can have more all this block level you know design in the templates okay so this means that our template will be simpler we don't need to write all the doc type and stuff like that uh, we can start with a simpler template like this like uh, this one and so the task list and we have the content here hmm? so let's see if it's working we should have a uh, oh sorry in booster everything should be inside a, a div uh, with class uh, container so that it will come out nicer okay so let's check this we can start the server and try to load the page uh, slash tasks so we the badge, the default page is not defined but tasks uh, okay we will show this show this page so you see that it's a blank ba blank page basically but with all the bootstrap uh, layout already defined okay just to to be faster okay so what we do now it's not hello bootstrap but it will be the task list and we imagine that the page here should have uh, basically two sections one with the list of tasks and one with the form for adding a new task so we are imagining this design of two different parts of the page uh, maybe the task list in a first div and then we have a second that will contain the um, insert task part of the website so we have the, this page divided in two sections and we can populate these two sections dynamically what I mean is that uh, some JavaScript, this, this section task list is empty right now. Some JavaScript code will need to run after the page has been loaded and uh, query through HTTP REST the server for the list of tasks and uh, populate the content of this div that starts empty. Okay, that's what we want to do. So, first of all, how, we, how do we inject easily some JavaScript code into our page? Hmm? We can do that with JavaScript, of course, by setting a script, uh, by using the jQuery library. 
okay we sent you some links uh, to have a first look at, at jquery how, how it works uh, it's actually a, a much uh, easier version uh, of javascript for manipulating finding and manipulating uh, uh, html elements and attributes and styles so first step uh, we need to create a script in javascript to include first second to include the script in this page and to ensure possibly that the jquery library is also loaded in our case the bootstrap template already loads uh, the jquery library for us it's already there if we look at the code here you see that uh, it includes the css for bootstrap and two javascript libraries the bootstrap library and the jquery library so actually jquery is already loaded in our page we need to load our specific script with the instruction for this specific page okay um, where okay we, we can have a scripts block a script block where we add the uh, the script command the HTML command for loading our custom script our custom script will be in the static library so we need another another directory static in our static directory we will have uh, a new javascript file called uh, tasks.js okay and here we want to include these tasks so script source is a url for static file name is uh, uh, tasks uh, tasks.js tasks.js close the braces but we still need so the scripts block contains all the scripts uh, to be included in the page right now we are including our file task.js with a closing quote there but uh, in, in, in with this syntax we are replacing the old scripts with this one so we need also to load the other ones hmm? so remember that we also should there's uh, an instruction for that like uh, in in uh, when you are creating a subclass yes create a template which is a subclass of a given template so we first call the constructor super of that block so this super call will include these two scripts the previous content of the scripts block and then we define our own script that will be added here at the bottom we didn't need to do this uh, initialization of the super class uh, for example in the content because the content by default was empty so we didn't have anything to to, con to conserve actually we can define our own and we'll be the only one hmm? okay let's see if it works uh, static tasks uh, url let's try it redeploy the application reload the page And we see that okay now we have our own static task js uh, that points to an empty file but we don't have any errors for the moment okay the file was read correctly 200 the response code from the server so right now we can start working into task.js to 
do stuff on the page um, remember the discussion last time when we say that uh, um, we need always to postpone all the operations in the page after the HTML has been completely loaded we defined only event handlers so that some operations could only be done or should only be done after that after the page has been completely loaded or uh, or after some user did some action on the page okay so registering event handlers we are doing the same here but we are using uh, the jQuery syntax okay jQuery in general as a form like this this is just conceptual uh, dollar find something dot do something so the dollar is not a strange and is not a special character but it's the name of a function that can maybe also called jquery jquery is the name of a function and dollar is another name for the same function just because the dollar sign is a normal identifier character in, in javascript and so the creators of the li of this library for letting you do uh, write something very short uh, they use the dollar sign so it's nothing special so the dollar function has many purposes but actually it finds inside the document what you are looking for and returns an object that represents the DOM nodes. Actually, we are working on with the DOM all, always with the doc with the document. The DOM nodes with some additional methods and features than what is already available in JavaScript. They can return the dollar can find a, a single element or a list of elements. I can find. A, a, in our HTML, I have a div with with ID task list. I can find sorry for the, with hash task list. The syntax in jQuery is uh, to specify what you want to find using the CSS syntax. CSS we already know it for selecting blocks or elements. So if you want to do something on that div you can find it with dollar jquery hash task list or for finding all the divs or finding the elements with class footer or whatever you want okay so we by reusing the css syntax that we already know we can let jquery find the portion of the page so all the elements that match what we are what, what, what we want to do in general these matches can be multiple so in general what uh, this dollar function returns is a list of elements and then we can do something on these results we can add the class we can add some content we can remove some content we can change some attribute and the operations that we do apply on all the elements of the list so of all the divs at the same time for example hmm? and uh, and the jQuery documentation the jQuery website uh, okay it's here we have uh, all this api documentation with list of all the functions that you need so we have all these uh, selectors that list all the possible syntax for finding elements in your page so uh, selecting attributes selecting uh, classes uh, selecting elements selecting ids and so on hmm? 
IDs, and so on. So we have a syntax inside the, the argument of, of this dollar function that will help us uh, match uh, the element or the set of elements that we know that we need hmm, that we want and then we can do stuff on these elements for example we can we can change in this manipulation we can change add a class or remove a class to an element add some content inside that element or remove it or change some attributes hmm? and so on change the style sheets empty the content and so on or change uh, the content by providing a new fragment of HTML to replace what was already included in that element hmm? so we have a, a long list of functions for manipulating the, con the content of your uh, page so, for example, we want to include in this div uh, a list, a bullet list with uh, our various tasks. So, what we can do is to find this task list and do something with it. A pen, for example, is a, is a jQuery function. Let's look at the description that inserts some contents specified by the parameter to the end of each element in the set of matched elements so we have the set of matched elements which is our div and i will append something inside uh, inside the div the difference between append and append to is that append appends uh, uh, inside the element at the end but inside the element append to will append uh, just after the element the new content hmm? so we want to append for example the content of a list so we insert a ul element inside the task list so i'm creating a list okay for creating a list, first I create the UL container, and then I will create the list items, li, li, li. Hmm? And uh, just to make an example right now, we can add to the task list UL. This is a selector that will select the UL element that I just created, an UL inside the task list append a first uh, list item hello hmm? so this will be the basic mechanism So we can find the elements and modify their attributes, their classes, or the content. Now the question comes, uh, when do we need to execute these instructions? We may execute these instructions only after the page has been loaded. So we should register an event handler for the body of the page that calls a function that will contain these two instructions only when the body has been loaded so if we use the the old way that we learned we should define in the body what we, we, we don't have actual here an onload event handler that points to a function in javascript that we define here that contains these instructions this is not particularly nice because we, we will need to you know uh, populate all the html with all the event handlers so the person who writes the html should know which event handlers will be registered and for doing what so it will create uh, too much confusion and too much interdependency between the template 
and the actual front-end code it's much better if we if we use javascript itself for registering the event handler we can do that with jquery of course with jquery we have a set of uh, event methods that can add some event handler to the elements that are already being found by the dollar function so find some element and attach an event handler to it for example we have uh, you know the click event uh, the change event uh, if something changes into a text area for example or the mouse hovers over a an element and so on so by using all these methods we can attach event handlers to existing elements what we want to do actually is to attach an event lender to the body so what we want not we what we need to find is the document so dollar find which is the node that they want to do something on the root the body document is already a variable that refers to that node so i don't need to write a css with body we already have the reference so find the document node and then attach an event handler for the event ready or or document ready ready it's ready sorry Okay, it's just the auto completion in PyCharm, which is a bit flaky. So, what we do here is to attach an event tender function to the read, read event of the document node. When the document is ready, read. When the document has finished loading, call this event tender. So we can call it, uh, for example, document ready handler. And we can define this function, document handler, document handler ready. No, document ready, sorry, the, the other way around. Choose a shorter name to do these instructions. Okay, the argument of the ready function is the name of the event handler. Should be the name of a function. You see, I don't have the parentheses. I'm not calling the function here. I'm passing the reference to that function. Okay, if I wrote the parentheses here, then I would call the function right here. No, I'm not. I'm just saying the event handler is this function with this name. And the function is defined above or below. So does it work? I don't know. Let's try. Redeploy. Shift reload. Oh, hello appears there. So we are sure that hello was not in our HTML. It was added by the JavaScript. So the page is being loaded, mind the sequence of the events. The page is being loaded. After the loading of the page, or, uh, the script has been executed. The script has been loaded here at the end of the page. When the browser reads the script here, it does nothing. It just defines a function and put it away and it registers an event handler that's gone to sleep there waiting for the event to happen so when i read the script uh, actually i don't do anything 
I only define stuff for later. I define functions and I define event handlers. Then, milliseconds later, the browser finds the end of the document, loads all the images, all the style sheets, or whatever it needs to load, and then declares the document ready. The browser says, I finished my work on this HTML. And so it fires the ready event on the document. At this point, this function is called. So this function is called by the browser later on, not when it's defined, nor when it's attached to the event handler, but later on, when this event will fire. And the, at that point, the function just executes normally. Using jQuery, it manages the content of the page. Okay, so this is a way of do, uh, working. Actually, people writing JavaScript uh, don't like to define a lot of uh, accessory functions. So I'm defining this function here, I'm trying to find a good name for it, uh, and I know that this, this function will be only used once. Right? So can I define this function here in line yes <laughs> JavaScript has a very strange syntax or defining function in place by just writing function parameters braces I don't have a name for this function. These are anonymous inline or inner functions. They are anonymous because I wouldn't be able to call them anyway by name because it's something that is defined there and immediately forgotten. They don't have a name. They don't need a name. If, if, the, if we only use them once, I don't need to specify a name to this function. So it's function without a name. I may have some parameters. In this case, I don't need any. And they have a body of this function right now, right here. And so inside here, I can write the body of this function. That is a bit upsetting because I'm defining a new function inside the parameter list of another function call or a normal statement. But the semantics is exactly what I saw before. Before I had an explicit function with a name, and here I have an, an anonymous function. The order of execution is the same. So I can delete this function there, it's not needed anymore, and this behavior is the same. The function is ready, sorry, is read by the JavaScript interpreter, this block from here to there. It's read, the function is defined, and it's set away. The reference to this function is passed, is, the, is, is a number, is a reference, the pointer, is passed to this uh, ready method that will register that function that doesn't have a name as the event tender for the ready event uh, for the document object. So it's the same as before, except with the name. And if the, I don't have a name, uh, I'm forced to define the body of the function right there when I need it. So it's strange because right now we are closing, you see that there's this closing brace for this function followed by the closing parenthesis of this red. And this semicolon closes this statement. So it can become a bit ugly if we are not... Uh, very careful with the, with the code. So, just to show you that it works in the same way. Okay, it works in the same way. Okay, let's go forward. 
So in, in JavaScript, it's common to do like that, to register an event tender at the last minute. The HTML doesn't know which, event, which events will be handled because it's JavaScript code that registers what it needs for itself. Okay, but right now, the interesting part is that we don't know right now the content of this list. If we had a, an array here with the tasks, I could loop through the array and write, I complete this list. I don't have it. And uh, this uh, um, this JavaScript code and this HTML template don't know the list of tasks. The only way to know the list of tasks for this JavaScript code is to ask the, the REST server. Okay, the page is already loaded. The HTML is gone. Uh, the JavaScript is gone. Everything is on the browser. The HTTP connections are closed. So how can the browser know about the tasks? Well, the JavaScript code could make a REST call to the APIs of the, of the web server. And give me the list of tasks in JSON. And then the JavaScript will take this JSON and reformat the JSON into HTML. Sounds crazy, it is. Uh, so how can we make a call from JavaScript to a web server? We can, through a method, I will make it short, which is uh, called AJAX. AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It's a new, new, no, it's not new uh, right now, but new for us, uh, way of uh, writing code in JavaScript. It's an asynchronous uh, method. It's an object that, uh, I, make it, I promote to, to make it short. There's an object in JavaScript, uh, in the standard library, that, that is called HTML, sorry, XML HTTP request, XHR for the friends. And what does this object do? It manages an HTTP request to a remote server in an asynchronous way. Why asynchronous? We already saw that when the JavaScript code is, ex is executing, the browser is blocked. Remember, when we had an alert, JavaScript program was st stopped on the alert, and all the browser was frozen. You could not do anything with the page. So. In executing a JavaScript code, we could never wait uh, for an HTTP request to an external server to go through and to get the response. It will take hundreds of milliseconds. Hmm? So we can make a remote call and then proceed to do something else. And only when the call returns, uh, we process the result. That's what we mean with asynchronous. The continuation of the the, 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 the processing of the request will be done later, not synchronous with the call, not right now. I'm not waiting for the result. I'm calling a function, but I don't wait it for returning. How does it work? It works uh, by managing a state machine like this. So this, uh, I, I will, uh, I'm, I'm not going to details because jQuery makes it much easier. Okay, but so to to give you the, the, um, the main concept. There's a state of an HTTP request. So we are making, in our JavaScript code, an HTTP request to another server. This request uh, will be first uh, open, opening the connection, sending the request, uh, and then the, the browser, sorry, the, the remote server will process the request and will start sending the response back until the uh, request the body of the response is finished is closed and then we go into this done state what we will do we will do is to send 
a request so we bring the object to this state sent and when we do that by calling a send method actually um, the browser will send the HTTP request but then or before that we set an event handler on this object tell him please object tell me when you reach the down state so do all your job of waiting the headers analyzing the headers waiting for the body and whatever when you finished call this function I want to be informed and want to handle the response okay okay so this is the idea uh, we don't see how it works with raw, um, raw uh, JavaScript uh, because we use, uh, where is that, the AJAX functions in jQuery. Where are they? Where are they? AJAX, the first one. And uh, there are a set of methods. Actually, the main, the main function is this one, $.ajax, that makes an, edge, an asynchronous HTTP request. And then there are shorthands for jQuery.get, for example, that makes an HTTP request of type get, or Still better, jQuery.getJSON makes a get HTTP request and expects a JSON response. Expect that the response should be in JSON and already analyzes this JSON for us. So this is what we want. Hmm? Um, let's have a look at the general AJAX uh, object. Uh, what we have uh, is a uh, because mm, under the hood, uh, this is the function that is used always by jQuery, a URL where we want to send a request uh, and a set of settings of parameters. And the settings uh, can be, for example, content type, the type of the data, can be the data to be sent, uh, the data type, uh, to be expected in response and uh, the method get post delete uh, so for get we already have the jQuery.get method but if you want to apply other methods we can just make a use the ajax function by specifying method equal to the name of the get that we want and so on and uh, especially later on uh, with the s s t success is a parameter that lists the functions that should be called if the request succeeds okay so this function will be called much later when the response is back from the server and this response is uh, successful so i don't get an error i get a 200 code not a 404 or 500 code so I'm sending a request and at the same time registering an event handler that will be fired when the response is back. In our case, what do we need to do? In our case, we should uh, get from the server a list of tasks. We know how to do that. So we can get json the first uh, parameter is, is also the, the address we know the address is this one slash the list method for the task collection right uh, 
And so when I call this function, a get request to this address is made. Don't think that in the next line here, we have the response. I'm not waiting for the end of this HTTP request. So in the next line, we don't have the response back. It will come much later. So in the next line, we cannot append or populate the list. We should set up a function for appending the contents much later. And the function is defined here as the handler of the success event. So in an event handler, I'm launching a function that register another event handler. And here we have the body of the second event handler. Okay? And what do we do here? We can, let's have a look uh, back at the simplified function, jQuery.getJSON. So getJSON may have three parameters the URL, the data that is sent to the server. We don't need to send anything here, so I can just omit this parameter. And success, that is this function, that will uh, be called with three different parameters. So this function is called by the AJAX object on my code. I can receive some parameters. The first one is data. And data, if the value of data is an object is convert, okay, uh, no, the function. The success callback function is passed to the return data, which is typically a JavaScript object or array as defined by the JSON structure and already parsed. So I have one parameter in this function that is called uh, data the first parameter that is already a javascript object constructed by parsing the json so this is what we can do here so the task list uh, sorry the first parameter is data is uh, data make make it tasks so that we don't have the same name here remember var uh, to avoid declaring global variables so now these tasks should be should be cross fingers the list of tasks that we want to see let's try maybe to see them what happens So redeploy and refresh. Okay. It's object. What? But something came back. We can see better what happens in the debugger. In the debugger, I can see that task.js can set a breakpoint here. Okay, so yeah, I pulled up the J JavaScript that was loaded uh, and I set a breakpoint uh, in the callback function of the getJSON. So this callback will, uh, with this breakpoint, will stop when the response from the server comes back. So that we can have a look at this object interactively. So we reload the page. Okay, and the debugger stopped everything here. I execute this instruction and I add the tasks variable here. 
maybe here it's easier tasks it contains uh, five uh, six elements from zero to five each of them with a description id and urgent fields so it's a uh, an array see the square brackets it's an array of uh, six elements that are dictionaries right so at this point let's go back here we can loop through the array for uh, uh, index uh, from zero to tasks dot length we can have a single task as the tasks dot uh, i indexed by i and what we could do here is uh, actually to append the content of the task on the list in javascript uh, a dictionary can be accessed by the usual bracket notation so brackets quotes uh, description like in python or there's a shorthand uh, the dot notation when the name of the field is already known so you can write it it's, uh, it's, it's not available so t dot description is equivalent to t find description okay in python we are used to use dictionaries in this way in javascript also but we also have this shorthand notation so all the dictionaries are already it's a uh, duplicated uh, as uh, direct properties of an object hmm? so it makes it shorter so does it work we close this reload okay it doesn't work good I will be surprised so the request has been made but something wrong happened later So let's try it again with the reload here. Okay. Uh, we set a breakpoint here and again and see what happens. So go further tasks. Okay. Length. So we go into the loop. No. Tasks. Uh, what's wrong here? Length equal to six. Task of length. I is zero. I never move from zero tasks no. 
don't think so let me check here so um, or maybe it's not so let me check again Just try again, sorry. So, right there. Flash, tasks. Okay. The bug. Breakpoint, reload. Okay, go here. Length undefined. Task dot length. Okay. Ah, uh, task task. It's a dictionary with a single item called tasks that contains, uh, you see here, that contains the, 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 the array, actually. Mm -hmm. So we need to extract it because the JSON was formatted like that. Mm -hmm. We did it. So it's not data, but it's data tasks. Data is the JSON. And we, uh, it's, an all, it, it's a dictionary with only one element called tasks, whose content should be an array. Should be, always. And so in this case, magic. So we populated this task list uh, dynamically. So whenever you want to refresh the li this list, you just repeat this kind of instructions here. We are never leaving this page. We are changing this page dynamically. In this case, by reading, by querying the server and analyzing the response. We could also pull the, 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 the urgency of the task or whatever you want. We need to write the urgency. We, want, we need to put a delete link uh, besides this task and so on. But something that well, once we are here, no, it's easier to do. And this for listing the tasks. The next step, let's start, at least let's start it, is to adding a new task. Adding a new task means uh, working again on the HTML and creating the form. The form the, at the bottom of the page is something static. You don't need to create it dynamically. You just put it there. Okay? So it's a normal form. You don't need to set an action or a method on this form because it will never be submitted, really. Hmm? It's just a form who the who submit button will be managed by the JavaScript and not by the server. We don't need to send the form to another web page and destroy this page by loading a, a new one. We want to stay on this page. And uh, just to make it uh, simple, simple, 
we can have uh, so div class option uh, form group inside we have a, a label that can be task and uh, uh, input type text Sorry. class uh, form control name description and then we have a submit button No, we don't need it, probably just a button. Something like this. Very minimal. Uh, what did they do? I created so, so maybe it's not nice looking I should put it in line and maybe write something on the button should name I'm not, sorry I'm not sure and one last try and then I look at the documentation let me cheat ah okay sorry the text is uh, is outside because HTML is consistent I yeah okay so I want now to hijack the action of this button I don't want the user clicking on this button to go to the form action by calling our web server I want to handle myself in my JavaScript this button so what should I do I should define a uh, and handler for the click event on this button and then do what I want inside it okay so I created the button right now it would uh, reload the page actually because the form doesn't have any ac um, any uh, source specified so it don't have any address to go and the browser just reloads the same page but I don't want to load the same page, I just want to execute my code. So I go to the JavaScript and I register an event handler on this button, or still better on the form. When I'm trying to submit the form, so it's better to um, there, are, there are, for example, two ways of submitting a form. Clicking on the button and pressing enter. I want to hijack both of them. So it's the, for, uh, uh, the form itself, the form element that will issue a, a submit event when one of the various submission modalities has been fired. So I'm taking that, that, uh, that uh, event and then defining A function for doing something in that case 
so whenever the user clicks or some way submits the tries to submit the form i do something else and then this is important don't uh, submit the form i return false that means don't process it, this event anymore so the the event the submission event will never go to the browser and the browser will never su really submit the form anywhere so i'm blocking the propagation of the event otherwise uh, i would do my code and then reload the page just destroying what i did probably so usually when you uh, hijack the submission of a, of a form you don't want the form to be submitted anyway It could be some in some cases maybe you do, you do want to be submitted because you are doing some, just some validation just checking whether the data is available and so on so in this case here we are inside the form the submission button has been clicked and we want to add a new task to the server and what is the description the description is taken from the the value of the input element with name description so there is an ugly syntax for that so you have the input element with name equal to description You are, we are matching by attribute matching an element of name element name input and attribute name equal to description hmm? it's here selectors by attribute like this name equal to value Uh, like that you see input value equal to in our case we are filtering on the name this is the input element we want to extract the value hmm? there is a shorthand in uh, in jquery that is called val extract the value of the input so description should be the text uh, that the user just wrote and now we want to send this description using a post call and a synchronous post call to our web server so what happens when the user clicks i gather gather the information written by the user and send it to the server through the api the rest api in this case you need to make a post on the list uh, address and on this post on this sorry uh, yes in this post i need to send the json describing the description describing the structure of this new task okay so we are a bit out, out of time just i want just to show you what what you need to do from this other project why well, i already solved it this issue it's uh, here it's a bit different but uh, what i'm doing here is uh, because it's a bit more complex because yeah oh i have more uh, more graphic uh, items and so on but uh, the, the 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 main points are the same i create yeah, so you are i'm on a submit function of a form okay the event tender for the submission extract the value of the task description and creates a javascript object with the representation of the task so description contains the description urgent contains one or zero according to a checkbox 
in our case we do we don't have it so we, sh we should put urgent equal to zero and so we are creating a JavaScript dictionary describing that task we take this dictionary task and convert it into a JSON string with the json.stringify method stringify converts a JavaScript object to a JSON string and then we can send the JSON string with a post I'm using a bit more complex syntax here where I have a list of parameters in braces where I want to send the URL which is less tasks the data format, uh, the, da uh, sorry, the data content, which is this JSON is actually this string that I just created. So actually the string containing the JSON representation in the data field. And the content type uh, to tell the server, to tell the server uh, that this payload is in JSON. Otherwise, for a post, uh, the browser would uh, assume that the data is formatted into uh, uh, the form uh, form encoding standard that will mess up your your json totally hmm? so you need the this is the, the the reason why i need to use this more complex syntax because the content type argument is not in the simplified version of the post so i use the, the complete version that's why I, why I wanted to show you you need to send the data the in the request body and also set the content type uh, application json of this data saying okay i'm sending you this day some data in this format and then we have the return false the success function in this case uh, reloads uh, the task list because after i uh, added a new task is being added to the database but then i need to refresh my ballots my ballot list on the front end and this list will be refreshed only after the, the the data has been added on the server so refreshing the list is something that we do in the callback function of the when something succeeds so we need to be used uh, to have an event handler inside an event handler inside an event handler mm -hmm. jQuery is a lot uh, of nesting levels uh, to be managed so try to to write clearly format format very well your code write comments because otherwise you will get lost very easily always think that uh, i'm setting something now to happen to happen later this is all asynchronous even driven asynchronous programming it's very easy to get messed up hmm? but now we have uh, actually we have the two fragments of code this one get json and then extracting for the data for all the get methods and this post call when you need to post something so in your need you can pick these two codes in JavaScript and, and modify them according to what you need yeah? if you need to, to issue a, a put or a delete you just need to call the not uh, the Ajax function instead of post by specifying the method but it will be the same structure as this call here and so this is the more Let's say general form okay and in this way we are completely separating the back end from the front end and this is the first step for moving to mobile application for example where the front end runs locally on your smartphone and needs to exchange data with the server that runs actually on the web server so the front end may be a native application or maybe a local uh, web page but the mechanism is, is the same hmm? okay so you have time until uh, monday to work out what happens here and on monday in the lab uh, we'll try to finish uh, this application here hmm? so the task for monday will be 
completing this uh, the mockup application with all the functions of completing the post and adding the delete uh, of the tasks okay okay thank you for tonight